If we can ask him to just open in a word of prayer, please. Okay, sure. <clears throat> Let us pray and commit ourselves to our God who cares for us. <clears throat> our Father in heaven, and thank you for this beautiful opportunity that we gather together in your name, Lord. This, we are here from different parts of the world. And Brother Eliza Raz Jacob is going to teach us about the language that is very necessary to learn to understand your word, Lord. And as we are here to listen from you, O Lord, we commit ourselves and we ask and pray that, that the Holy Spirit will help us to guide us and bring us all the way to bring your glory and honor. That is what we are living here in this world. Bless us together. Bless our teacher. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, Alison, uh, you can, you know, when you want to, if you want to jump in and interpret, then you can. Eh? Uh, uh, I requested uh, Reverend uh, Ananda Baro, he will help. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Thank you. So, okay. And um, the, f the first thing we need to do, just for us that are here, um, I just want to get some sense of what is really that you're looking forward to. What is really, really that makes you interested in Hebrew? Um, Right, okay, we, what we need to do, we don't really need to understand, um, but just simply why you need to learn about the pure language. Okay, we'll start from uh, Ajoy. Thus. Okay. Thank you. It's a great opportunity for me. Uh, actually, um, when I'm here, uh, uh, in a new class uh, to learn uh, Hebrew language. Uh, it uh, inspired me uh, because uh, uh, this language always uh, uh, attracted me. Attract me. Um, um, yeah, I believe it's a more powerful language. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, uh, so I take it. Uh, but uh, I believe uh, the, uh, when I learned this language, uh, God worked uh, in my heart and uh, my uh, my my work uh, uh, day to day um, powerful. Uh, so uh, it's a reason uh, to learn uh, Hebrew language. Thank you, thank you, uh, Joy. Um... Uh, thank you. From my side, it is uh, because I am very much interested to know about the uh, learn about the Hebrew language because I believe that uh, uh, this Bible, uh, many of the books has came from the Hebrew language, but due to the trans uh, translation of interpretation, sometimes we cannot be understand because it's from Hebrew to English, English to Bangla. So uh, for my more understanding that when I will able to learn the Hebrew, then hope that I will able to more uh, depth. And so it will help me uh, understand the depthness of this uh, truth of word. So I am very much interested to uh, learn the Hebrew language. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Reverend uh, Bernard. Yeah, just simply tell us why is it really interest you? So thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I am Bana Kimparoy. Uh, welcome. Uh, I agree to Hebrew in Hebrew, uh, Hebrew Bible, uh, Hebrew uh, language. Uh, I am very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Pida International. Pida International. Pida. Uh, Shushan Didi. Sister, uh, Sister Shushan. Oh, Sister Shushan, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> also, Dada is with us, yeah.
<clears throat> I want to say she is not available. Okay, she is she's, she's not available. Phone. All right, okay. Um, how about Dr. you? Uh, or, uh, yeah. Mr. Pranay can say, yeah. Okay. Yes, I am yes. trying to express my yes. opinion. Sorry. I have learned that a uh, few percentage of uh, information that we get in translation that are not completely you know, translated uh, in different languages. So Hebrew can present that few percent and we, to know that few percent correctly, we should know the Hebrew language. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, who's next? Can I say something? Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, I am I am Pranay Karmukar. Just I am entire enter the uh, Zoom. Uh, I'm I am heard from Hebrew language, uh, Mr. Ellison. But when he proposed to me uh, about Hebrew language, I'm very much interested to learn. But I know the one new language. Learn is not so easy. It is it is very hard to learn. But uh, I'm trying to learn uh, Hebrew because um, you know that Bible, if you want to explain about Bible fully, then you need to uh, learn uh, new language, Hebrew, Greek, some other language also. So uh, that, that is why I'm interested to, to learn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Mondal. Uh, Shushan, they can share now that why you are interested to join the Hebrew class. You want to show the parts in a listen? I'm going to connect a problem with the network. Okay, there she is now. Okay, let me. Take a privilege. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, as as Hello. we may know that. Oh, Hello. Okay, yeah, please. Hello. Yeah, so Good, that's 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 Good morning. Morning. Actually, uh, I like to learn this uh, language because uh, when I read Bible, uh, I can understand many things. And... Uh, it is actually Bangla is translated from the English and then it is meaning, sometimes the meaning is we, we can't understand, it is changed. But if we uh, can know the Hebrew language, uh, it is, I, I think uh, we could understand the uh, original uh, meaning of Bible. So I like to know that. So I like to uh, learn this language. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Reverend uh, Ananda. Yeah, I think uh, just Didi said what I just wanted to say. This uh, the Old Testament, especially written uh, in the Greek, a Hebrew language, so it's the original language, and God revealed the word. It's one reason that we may understand his word because God is, the word is God no? and the word became flesh and we know it's all about Jesus. So we must understand Jesus, who he, who he is, uh, not in our perspective, but from God's perspective, he, what he wanted us to know. So he, for, in order to do that, it is really helpful to understand Hebrew language. So in a word, I'm studying Hebrew to understand God more better way than what I can understand from Bangla Bible. And, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else left? Uh, Elson, anybody else? We haven't. Uh... Everybody who is in here, everybody shared their uh, testimony. All right. Okay. Now, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, 
that was brilliant. <clears throat> I will tell you um, what happened uh, when I started. Um, when I started, I, I, I looked for a motivation, or rather, I wasn't aware that I was only trying to learn another language. I am, uh, by birth, I'm Fijian, and I am an Australian citizen now. But when I, I, I wanted to just learn another language. So I've, I've learned that and I, I uh, in Fiji, we have Indians there. So I learned a little bit of your language as well. That's why when you're talking, I could understand it. Maybe I cannot speak. So be careful if you want to talk about me. So I know. <laughs> All right. Um, I wanted to learn another language. And after one month, I gave it up because it was really hard. It was hard to learn. And then I said to the Lord, I know I, and my heart is really trying to learn this. And he showed me my motivation was wrong because I wanted to learn another language. So what I'm trying to say, if you're here to just learn another language, it's going to get hard for you. And then I pray and I said, okay, give me. What is it that I need to anchor my motivation? So the, the last one that took me for six years, I had to learn for six years, is I wanted to see God in his word. And what happened is when I get to see him in his word, because you cannot see God, if in this flesh you see God, the Bible says that you can't live. So the most tangible thing you have in your hand is the word. So God is the word, as Reverend Ananda said. So why don't I spend time with the word? So what happens is my new motivation that took me for six years was to see God in his word. When I get to see him, the unexpected happened. What happened is it, when I saw God in his word, I get to see who I am. And guess what? I noticed that I am really, really small. So, and I don't mind that because God uses the small things to confound the big things. He uses the weak things to confound the strong. So if you are at any time feeling that you are small, you are in a good place. You are in a good place. Why? Because that gives you that humility, the humility that's needed to serve God. All right, let me start with this. How did God create the universe? Question number one. By his word. Okay. In other words, did he speak the word? So my question is, if he was going to speak creation, then he needed a language to do so, right? Unfortunately, he didn't use English, he didn't use Fijian, he didn't use Bangladeshi, but he has to create a language so that he can speak creation. Make sense? So what we got to find out that what, which language is that? Okay, now you can tell me it's Hebrew. Right? You can tell me that's okay. But what evidence do you have in the scripture for you to know that he used the Hebrew language? And I can show it to you in the scripture. Now, I'm going to change my screen. I want to have a look at the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, so... Okay, see the, the very last one on the side here. 
Okay, that the one with the cross. That is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, now if I take it to the other side though. See that one there? That number one is called the Aleph. So that in your notes, you'll find that that's the Aleph and you've got the Ta. Right? The over there, right there. Okay? So what happens is the very first verse of your Bible, we know that it's God in the beginning God created the heavens. So tell me, what is the first thing that God created? Eh? What is the first thing that God created? According to the Bible, the heavens. Now, you're not going to be able to see what I'm going to share with you is the Bible says, so if in the beginning God created the heavens. So if I were to say that in Hebrew, it would be Bereshit bara Elohim eshamayim. Hashemayim is the heavens. See what I've said? Bereshit, that's in the beginning. Bara is create, right? Hashemayim, the heavens. In the beginning, God created the heavens. Bereshit bara Elohim is God, eh? the heavens. Okay. But that's not how it reads in the Hebrew and the original text. There's one word that you cannot hear in my last uh, verse, which I, you're going to hear now. Bereshit bara Elohim. Yeah, this is the word et hashemayim. The word et is not translated in our Bible, but it's being transliterated. So that's the word in this um, in this session of our two months, I think, of uh, lessons. You're going to be hear hearing a lot of transliteration and translation. Okay? Transliteration is the first step that you come from Hebrew to English. In other words, as you see, all these letters, they've got numbers. If you have your notes, it should be there. Okay? Um, the one, the, the one, those letters that I, I put together, or that I showed you, when you put them together, it is the et. Remember, Bereshit bara Elohim et. That's the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, when the Greek came and produced the Septuagint, or from the, the Greek uh, translation, they said that he was the Alpha and Omega, because Alpha is the first letter of the, of the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. No, because we know that Jesus was speaking with John in Revelation. He said to John, we read as I am the Alpha and the Omega. No, he, they were not speaking Greek then. They were speaking Hebrew or Aramaic as one earlier form of Hebrew. And he said to John, I am the Aleph, the, the letter the, that I showed you earlier and the top. Those two together, when you put them, it's transliterated et, but in the Bible it's not translated. That's why you find that in the Bible said, in the beginning, God created the heavens. All right. The Aleph in the top is actually the entire Hebrew alphabet. If it was English, if, if, if God had used the English, he would say A and Z. What would be the the Bangladeshi alphabet. 
एवं विसर्ग राइट द बिगिनिंग एंड द एंड या द बिगिनिंग एंड द एंड वुड बी गिवन इन बांग्लादेश लैंग्वेज इज दैट राइट बट इन जेनेसिस वन वन द बाइबल सेट बेरेशीत बरा एलोहिम एट दिस वर्ड इज ट्रांसलेटरेटेड बट नॉट ट्रांसलेटेड व्हाई बिकॉज नोबॉडी न्यू द मीनिंग but we know that john was given the revelation and he said in john 11 in the what in the beginning john was pointing back to genesis 11 he said in the beginning was the word he's talking about the entire alphabet of the hebrew language from 1 to the 22nd so what i'm saying is God needed a language to speak creation he had to create a language first make sense and that's the language we're going to try and learn because it's got so much it's got so much um that you are going to, let me give you an example okay let me just give you an example i'm sure some of you will catch it but if you don't it doesn't matter that's okay that's okay let me just give you um genesis 126 you know you can guess straight away what is 126 okay what is that anybody find it 126 about the, about the creation of man Okay all right what does it say in the big, okay and god said let us make man in our image after his likeness okay i want you to hear that and god said the word said here is it past tense what tense is it in the word said and god said is that past tense or present Past tense. All right. Okay. So if I were writing, if I were to write that word in 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 Hebrew, I'd say, um, "Amar Elohim," because the word "amar" means said. Past tense. I would say "Amar Elohim," and then the English translation is correct. But when you look, it will come a time when we look at the original text. He didn't say "Amar Elohim." it says vai amar elohim see the word amar is still there but in it's inflected in the present continuous tense so in other words it should have been and god is saying see but because it's translated in english right if i were to translate in bangladeshi i'll make sure that is written in the way the bangladeshi the Bangladesh? understand the word right so the people that translated the bible from hebrew to latin and into english they have to make sure that the readers are english speakers right and when they write in english they have to obey all the the grammatical you know protocols of writing english so they cannot relate something that happened thousands of years ago in the past in the present tense but hebrew can so the word vayomer elohim it should have been translated and god is saying right why because that word that scripture needs to be alive because when that word was spoken you and i were not born yet right Right. it was the way it is written so that it validates our existence when we were born so that's why he created this special language so that we reading now in 2023 can relate to that so we're talking about if you're here that you want to know the scriptures that's excellent that's good right 
So what I'm saying is during these two months that we will learn, there will come a time when you want to give up. Right? But that's why you need to set your um, motivation spot on. Because I, during my study, I wanted to give up. But my motivation was there. I wanted to see God in his word. And that's what kept me going, kept me going, kept me going until I did. Hallelujah. And let me say something to you. God is in his word because he is the word. The word is God. Right? So if you want to know about God, just go to his word. And I'm telling you, when you understand Hebrew, Bangladesh is going to turn upside down. Because the people I'm talking to you today are going to have a total switch of mindset. See, we've been shaped by our habitats. We are shaped by where we live, don't we? Because we listen to certain cultures, certain words, and the next thing, we become that culture, right? But we need to bring to the forefront the, the knowledge of God. Because at the moment, we are operating on the knowledge of good and the knowledge of evil. And that's why God didn't want us to eat, didn't want them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because he knew, God knew that if the knowledge of good and evil comes, it's going to um, confuse our choices. Because we got to choose from the knowledge of good and evil, the knowledge of God. The knowledge of good, the knowledge of evil, and the knowledge of God. So that's why in these days, sometimes we make choices that are good to us, but the question is, is it godly? See? So until we bring forward into our consciousness the, 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 word, the, the knowledge of God, we are going to struggle with our choices. Amen. Right? I'm, I'm not trying to preach here, no. I'm just trying to set up so that you will expect the things I'm saying because it happened to me. Yeah. Because if that really is your desire, you'll never give up. You know, I hopefully, maybe in one year's time, um, Lord willing, you know, I might get to Bangladesh one day, right? And we'll get to meet and sit there and you know, have classes. Um, but for now, that's where we are. We need to come together and work together and help each other in understanding all this. And I hope you have your notes because when you read your notes, look at things that you are not quite clear. Bring all that. So next week when we have um, our next class, uh, don't worry, I haven't finished yet. We still got an hour and a half left. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, it, it just understanding. So, first of all, we need to understand that God created this language. See, the world is too small to contain God. Right? So, what he did, he created time. Because he's timeless. He cannot fit into our time. So, But what he did, he created time so that the word comes. And John told us that. Because he was looking at the Al of Tav, the same word that is the entire Hebrew alphabet. He was looking at that and he said, hey, in the beginning, the word was there. And the word happens to be with God, right? So when you read that in scripture, in the Hebrew, it says Bereshit bara Elohim, and that's God, right? By the way, Elohim is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Ho and, and the Holy Ghost. Can you see that? We'll, well, down the road, we'll learn why that is so. 
because Elohim is a masculine plural more than two. All right? So don't go arguing with someone that says to you, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, because they are right. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. All right? But you can show them the evidence. It's in the word Elohim. Elohim is God the Father, God the Son, more than two, and the Holy Spirit. So every time you see the word God in your Bible, that's speaking of Elohim. But when you see Lord, L-O-R-D, that is Yahweh. That is Jehovah. Right? So we need to understand all these differences so that you can have some sense of why, you know, somebody asked me uh, if Jesus was lying when he said that, um, well, the question was right. He said to me, so you mean to tell me that Jesus lied when they asked him, when is the end time happens? And he said, no, I don't know. Was he lying? So I ask you today, was he lying? Huh? So I saw, wow. Pastor, I saw Reverend Anand uh, is uh, shaking his head. All right, can you qualify that, please, Reverend? Can you tell us what do you mean? Why isn't he lying? Don't tell me that he is the Son of God. He is God. He cannot lie. Because I know a lot of people. They tell me that. Yeah. So what is there? This is where we fall in Christianity these days. We say something, we cannot follow it up with evidence. Right? So was Jesus lying when he said to the disciples, when they asked him, when is all this thing going to happen? He said, I don't know. Only my father knows. So my question to everyone today, if you want to answer it, was he lying? Okay. Alison, you're shaking his head. Because it's my understanding, the word has written, it is the truth word. Because this word came from the God. Because we believe that as a believer, that all the word is came from the God. So this word is truth. And Bible also says that uh, he is the truth and the life. Okay. So, uh, and uh, uh, so... So from the truth, this word is created. So it, it not be lie. It, it will be fruitful in uh, in his uh, duration time. Okay. Right. Okay. All the answers are good. All the answers you have is good. But let me tell you where it comes from when you want to give evidence. Okay. Have a look at what he's talking about. What did they ask him? They asked him about the end times. Right? They ask him about the end times. So the first time the end times was put out is through the Jewish feasts. There are seven Jewish feasts. Right? Now, what they're talking about is when, when you, you, you read this in Leviticus 23, that's when it was given to Moses. Now, Look carefully and see who was talking to Moses. Was it Elohim or Lord? It was Lord talking to Moses. It was Yahweh. So Jesus wasn't lying because it, that was only the privilege information between the Father and Moses. You get it? That's why it's critical that we understand what we are teaching the people. And the only way, unfortunately, is by learning the, I call it the pure language, because that's how Zephaniah says it. Now, Zephaniah 3, 9. Someone just read that for us. Zephaniah 3, 9.
We welcome Hutam Dali. How are you, sir? I'm a Portuguese, Bangladesh, Shafuni, or Tinoda, and I'm a Port. I'm a Totkale, I'm a Jati Gonke, Bishuddo, Osto Divo, Janatara, Shokole, Shadabu, Namedake, O Ed Joge, Tahar, Aradunakore. Okay, that's uh, Zephaniah 3 9. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. I'm going to say, I'm going to turn. Not a new language, he said, a pure language. Can you see that? What does your, does that agree with your translation, uh, Reverend Anand? Not a new language. Yeah, the same meaning, the same meaning, meaning, meaning is the same, yeah. Okay, so same pure meaning. language, pure language, eh? yeah. Not a new language. So a pure language, and what happens? So that it brings two things. It bring people to call on the name of Yahweh. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. And secondly, for people to work together in one concept. Right? Right. Okay. I'll explain right. to you in Hebrew what that means. Because it involves the shoulder blade. Right? involves that Hebrew word involves the shoulder blade. Why is it important to know that? Because at the moment we are standing shoulder to shoulder. So the moment somebody disagree, they go because nothing is holding them. But if we are joined on the collarbone, it's like two bullocks put together, right? With a yoke. When the left moves, the right moves too. When the right moves, the left moves too. Because God knew the benefit of us knowing one language together. We don't have to speak Hebrew. No. But we have to understand the word from the Hebraic perspective. Why? Because he knew it happened before. They only had one language. And the testimony of God himself is like this. Let's go down and do something. Because now in the, the Tower of Babel, if we don't stop them, whatever they want to do, they are going to do to, to get it because they understand the one language. Because at that time, there was only one language in the world. God knew the only uh, way for us to come and work in unity is for us to understand the scripture from one perspective. Otherwise, we have so many translations and we differ in the way that we take it, the way that we explain it. But if we go to the language which was original, there's no moving around. We are just going to come together. And all we do is that we are going to call the name of Yahweh. Right? So what is happening here? is we are going to learn the language that God used to create you, create me, to make you and make me, to form you and form me. Notice what I have done. What did I say? To create you, create me, to make you and make me, to form you and form me. Why? Because see, we, in our own language, even in our, my native language, we, my, my language is very poor. I don't know about Bangladeshi. And English is really very, very poor. Because it takes three to four English words to explain one Hebrew word. Right? So, um, because they have to put a lot of things there to explain Hebrew. We're going to touch that later in how we read the Hebrew uh, Bible. Eh? Okay, so what we are going to do in this moment, I see that in your notes, um, we have here on page one, uh, the aim for, or the goals for the classes, okay? Um, 
it is short term and long term. <clears throat> so what we'll do in these two months, we are just going to concentrate on the short term. So the, the short term is, I'm going to show you this um, lattice, and then I hope you have a piece of paper. In the notes I gave you, <clears throat> I think in page six, you'll find the name of the word. Okay, how many of you got your notes there? Okay, so there you go, page six there. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Sound, your sound is muted. Uh, your your sound microphone is muted. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. <clears throat> okay. Here, I'm just going to bring to you this. Okay. Okay, see that? The, the, I'm, I'm looking at page six here. The name of the first letter is Aleph. Can you see that? Ata. And that is the typeset. If you use a typewriter or a laptop rather, that's what you, and the other one is your written, eh? So, the exercise we're going to do is we are also, during this lesson, we are going to learn to write, okay? So the name of the word is Aleph. That's the typeset. That's the written letter over there. And then you've got the picture. See, every Hebrew letter has a picture. And that is the numerical value of one, right? Now, <clears throat> that's the name, it's in your page six, right? If you haven't got a copy, uh, please, can you let um, Alison know, they will give you a copy, all right? So that we can work together and say, see the same one. All right, the same one, what is the name? Bait. Bait. What is the first letter of the word? Alep. B. 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 So that means when you see this letter, the the the, the bet, you know that it represents the English letter B. Okay? B. Okay, so if I'm going to write uh, Reverend Amanda's name, the second name is Baroy. So you have a bat and then you have a rosh. Okay, so here, the first letter of, okay, just excuse me. Okay, so Sorry, I can uh, share the screen. Uh, okay, the all right. Okay, good, good. I can share that, please. Okay, go ahead. All right. All right. Good, good, good. All right. Ah, okay. All right. So, <clears throat> if you see that, you see... Um, where is, okay, so here you see Aleph and Bet and Gimel and Dalit. So when you put Bet, when you put a Hebrew letter Bet, that means when you transliterate, now remember the word transliterate, it's transliterated to B the letter B in, in Hebrew, in English rather, okay? So if you go to seven, eight, page eight, 
keep going. Oh, next one, next one. Okay, <clears throat> so here is Rosh. <clears throat> the name is Rosh. The name of the letter is Rosh. So what is the transliteration? Transliteration is R, the word R, okay? But it's not R. Can you see the difference is Rosh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, deal with that later. The, uh, the way it pronounced depends on where the shape of your tongue is in your mouth, okay? Meaning, because Rosh is a guttural word. It is, it is um, when you say it, you say it from the back of your tongue. So it is not Rosh, it's Rosh, 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 okay? See the, where it comes from the back of your mouth and it said Hrosh, Hrosh, okay? So the name Baroi is Bet, Rosh, right? And then either you have Ayin or, or Aleph that, that will go, because see Hebrew is a consonantal language. In other words, they only have consonant, no vowel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Yes, so, yes, sir. Okay, so Hebrew is a consonantal language, meaning it doesn't have the vowel. We'll explain that later, maybe next month when we go into vowels, right? So <clears throat> the name Baroi is Bet Rosh. That's the vowel. I don't know how many of you, what I see now is my children always send me a text and they said, uh, bye dad, or, or just, um, uh, bye, just B eh? and I D, and I know it's bye dad. Or when they mention a name, or they say um, you, they just put the, the letter U, okay? So we are now using the same thing. We don't need a vowel to explain, right? Now, the first time somebody sent me LOL, what does LOL mean? Laughing, love. laughing out loud, that's it. You see that? Because that's just using consonant. So Hebrew, is a consonantal language. So the name of Reverend uh, Ananda is, the surname is Bet and Rosh. Right? And Ayin will bring us the, Ayin or Aleph will bring us the, or the Yod, eh? the Yod, we bring you the, the Y, the I. Eh? So Baroi, that's how, we pick out. I'm just doing this an example so that when you see a Hebrew letter, if you want to know which one that is in English, you just go to the name of the letter. <laughs> the first letter <clears throat> is representative of that letter. Okay, go up to Aleph, the first one. Okay, so you see the name Aleph. Before the letter A, there is there, it's like a close inverted comma. It's called a glottal stop. But it is an open glottal stop, right? Which means when you write, trans when you transliterate Allah, you just put that glottal stop. The other one, go down to page, uh, to the next one, please, uh, Alison. Um, uh, keep going. Next, all right, okay, stop. Look at Ayin. The same glottal stop, but this time is reverse. This is a reverse. Can you see that? Can you just point to that? Uh, yeah. Up on the top. You see? See that marking before A. It is like, yeah, well, right, right, right. Yeah, that one there. So 
Every other one has got a letter except for these two. They are called um, glottal stop and reverse glottal. This is a reverse glottal. And the one in iron, which we saw before is, so when you see that, that, that stop is not just there for uh, cosmetic, no. It is there to tell us that there is a Aleph there. It's speaking of the Aleph, right? Okay. Um, uh, look at Lamed. Lamed is go up to the top. Okay, so here, yeah, stop. Lamed, no, no, go down. Next page, next page. Okay, look at Lamed here. Lamed, okay, here. It's the picture of a palm of, an hand, of the hand there, okay? Lamed there, okay? It mean, also means to teach. Yeah? To teach. Because the Lamed, the picture is the picture of a shepherd's rod. What do you do with the shepherd's rod? Can somebody tell me what the, the shepherd, when they use the shepherd's rod, what was it for? Anyone? Uh, the, the rod that I use for uh, control the sheep. That's right. To direct them to make sure to, in other words, to teach them to come back in line. So the word Lamed means to teach, right? And all those other meanings that are there, all right? Remember that, okay? And go back to the, go down to the next page, go down. Okay, uh, go up again, no, 90, 90, 90. Uh, no, sorry, 80. 80 is the word for mouth. Okay? Mouth. I've just given you the spelling of the letter Aleph. Okay, how many of you know uh, in, in, um, in Bangladeshi, your first alphabet, what is the spelling of your first alphabet? Huh? A. We call A or A. Or A. Okay, so what's the spelling of A? No? No, no. Oh, yeah, oh. oh, just A, eh? Nothing else. Okay, yeah. go up to the top, uh, Alison. Now, can you see the word Aleph here? Can you highlight that? It's got the three consonant is the glottal there. And the lamed, which is inside, which is the teacher, right? The shepherd's rod. And the last one is P, the mouth. So when you're reading the letter, because the first one is a, a picture of a head of an ox. I don't know, Indians at home, uh, the cows are very important because it breaks all their cart, especially in this time, right? Breaks their cart. Um, it is the one that, uh, you know, during harvest, they put the rice around. I always see the Indian community in Fiji. They, when they harvest their rice, they they take the, the animal around. They use this big bullock. So the picture of the head of an ox to represent olive is actually a strength. So when you're reading olive, it is the strength of the teaching and speaking, right? So you see, we haven't moved, we are still in one letter. The spelling is giving us some meaning already. So Aleph is the strength because it's the head of an ox. Lamed is teaching, right? And the mouth is speaking. 
right? Okay, let's try another example. Alison, I go, I want you to go to the second page. Okay, look at number nine. So this letter is called tet. This is the first letter of a word I'm going to explain to you. And it is a basket. Look at that. The, the, the picture is a basket. And the name is tet and the number is nine. Remember that. Remember that. Okay. So here you go. And the, the next one is uh, tet. Um, okay, this dead, and it's used in this word, batem. Eh? So the first letter, this is the middle letter, the dead. Go back on the top. The second letter is bet, right? It's B, and it's the picture of a house. Can you see that? So this is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, or uh, the Hebrew word batem, bet. It's the first letter, and then the number nine, the ninth letter is T, right? So B, T, and then the last one is Nun, right at the end, here, this one here, B, T, N, right? Three letters, and it's called the seed. Can you see the picture of the seed? How would you draw the seed now, uh, Alison? If I ask you to draw the seed in our normal, uh, in our present day, what what would you read? What, what would you draw? How do you draw a seed? Okay, let's just give him a. Okay, just draw a seed. Okay, something like that, a roundish thing, right? Ah, there, that's a seed now. But in ancient Hebrew, look at the seed. Just look at the seed, right? Remember when the Bible speaks of the seed of Abraham? Right? I, I, I want you, I hope you're, you're, you're understanding this. How vast and so in-depth this language is, right? So... That's a seed there. The seed there is the shape of a sperm, right? In ancient Hebrew, when they, when somebody asked them to, to draw a seed, that's what they had as the picture, the picture of a sperm. Now, if you put them together, what is the number of the middle letter? Let me see. Uh, go down uh, here. So the number is, no, no, up, 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 up. Up, up, Ted, now nah, here, number nine. So Ted is the middle letter. So the word is ba, that's the house. Te is the basket. And na is the seed that we just saw. Now, if I told you that the word baten, Baten, baten is the word for womb, W-O-M-B. Okay, are you getting this? The word baten means womb, all right? W-O-M-B, we all know what a womb is, right? So if I was to, when they see the picture of the word, remember it is the house, the basket and the seed. This is how they will explain the word beten in pictures. It is the basket that house the seed for nine months. Hello. Yes, got it. You got it. Okay, so now you see what you're about to to, to endeavor to, to learn is much more than your everyday language. It's much more than what you have seen before. When you get to understand Hebrew, boy, it's going to blow your mind. Because in the scripture, 
most importantly, are going to become very, very clear. Right? Okay, any question? Anybody want to ask a question? Any question? Just I want to know. Yeah. About the about the sign. This is a. I am. We are. We have seen the one sign, different sign, but it is not a letter. Is it? Is it a letter or is it a word? Okay. Before they never had letters. They only see pictures. You know, in Australia. The Aboriginal yeah. people, they just use picture. And the picture speaks to them. So, you know, uh, how many of you have seen in the Bible where you and I are called adults of God? Anybody? Uh, sorry, Pastor, repeat again. Okay, how many of you have seen in the Bible where it described you and me, us, as adults of God? Has anybody seen that in the Bible? Or are we all children of God? We, we are all children, children of God. God. Children of God. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay, we all have children, right? Don't we? When they were young, do you give them the Oxford Dictionary? How do you teach them? By pictures and drawings and tools. Yeah. Right. So we are children of God. And he teaches us through, you know, pictures. The Hebrew, is, yeah, go ahead. And that is that is good method to learn. Yes. If we, if we, if we uh, learn by picture. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's what, yeah, yeah. that's why they, in Hebrew, they all have pictures for the yeah, letters. Yeah. yeah. No, I remember in 2014, I went to the original people. It was December. And the first time I have left my family, and had Christmas and New Year elsewhere. Because that's, I went to their 86th meeting. The Aboriginal, they have this right up the mountain, close to um, Victor, Victoria and um, Queensland. Queensland. And some of them, they cannot write, they cannot read. I didn't know that until I got there. So I prepared something in the word of God in pictures. Boy, they really like it. They enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they understood pictures. Amen. 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 So, yeah. So, he, yeah. Uh, uh, let me uh, yep. share my uh, understanding. Even our, our alphabet. Uh, we know the meaning of our alphabet, but to the other people, I think you will see our alphabet as a picture because it doesn't, first of all, it is different than you, what I understand. So that way, all the alphabet is a picture, is, 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 is communicating us, but we understand since we have information about it. So... And that's why if we think, then all the things is a picture, actually. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. You know, what does uh, Romans one twenty say? Anybody can uh, say it? Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Everything works uh, towards good. Uh, those who have... Uh, uh, yeah, those those who okay. called by God and lead by God. Okay, so is that Romans chapter one verse twenty? Oh 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 no one no I said eight twenty eight. Oh. Sorry. 
ফলত তাহার অদৃশ্য গুণ অর্থাৎ তাহার অনন্ত পরাক্রম ও ঈশ্বরত্ব জগতের সৃষ্টিকাল অবধি তাহার বিবিধ কার্যের বোধগম্য হওয়া দৃষ্ট হইতেছে এই জন্য তাহাদের উত্তর দেবার পথ নাই ওকে সো the invisible quality of god can be seen in the things that are already created those are the, that's where your picture comes from right huh? so everything is there in the scriptures but when you look outside you see god in the things that he has already created okay All right so here we are and um all right so any other question all right we got another 40 minutes before we continue so here we are still on the first page of the first um lesson so this we are doing this so that you can understand its alphabet so we are going to touch this next week so i want you if you don't have a copy please let elison know right so that you can get a copy have that study next week so that we can um have uh, you know a time together in doing that okay so <clears throat> here look at this um i'm i'm going to give you something um after that uh, Okay and while I'm waiting for questions uh, what else have you got anybody got more question uh, uh for our understanding if I, we find if we no read all yes, the alphabet maybe. Uh, we if we read all the alphabet then we will able anybody? to learn the uh, spelling so it will be fine if we uh, read yeah we have to uh, learn sequence, the yeah. alphabet first eh? yeah, when yeah. we do that we go going to it be easier for us to go okay all right elison um can i ask you to to finish uh your sharing i want to share one uh, for us okay all right thank you i want you to watch this before i do this i want to explain to you um salvation is it only found in the new testament anybody salvation also in the old testament also say about the salvation because oh. when say about the jesus yeah. then it means that uh, he will come for the salvation his, his name will be the immanuel and he will uh, save save us from our sin okay absolutely anybody else there's a, there's a reason for you to say old testament anybody else want to say something apart from what uh, elson just uh, shared with us okay i'm going to share this with you it's in the letters of the word the hebrew letters of the word and uh, first let me just uh, share my screen okay so <clears throat> okay so here we are All right, can you see that? Yeah. Can you see? All right. Okay. So, here is a word. Okay. <clears throat> This is Genesis 1:26. This is the word likeness because God said that we are made in his image after his likeness. Okay? So, here is the word right. I call this I'll, I'll tell you what I call it. here and this is another word i want you to watch this this word says but in the day that you will eat of it you will surely die and the word is mut and the other word is dimut so mut and dimut they sound similar but what is the difference can anybody say it 
is dead and uh, Dimu is likeness as as like okay as. the the red letter can you see that the red letter is actually red, what the red, red, red letter yeah the difference is the red letter right okay Alison can you read out the meaning of the red letter it's in number four on the page that you showed us. Just read it out. I want you to, everybody, to listen to what Alison is going to read. What is the meaning of this letter? Number four. What is the name of the letter? Alex. What is the name? Apni shudu letter ta ki oda bolte bolse. Oi letter ta ki? On on your lesson on your page the before. Just you just read it out. You don't have to show us. Just read it out. Letter ke ki naam e daga hoy. Shere zante sahi. Dalit. Dalit. Okay. Dalit. Okay. Tell us the meaning. What is it? Dalit meaning is the uh, door. The door, everybody heard that. That is the door. So door. the word the word likeness, which is demult, includes the door. Right? Okay, guess what? In John 10, number 9, 10, 9, who knows the verse? The first four words of John chapter 10, verse 9. Here, the Dalit is actually the door. Guess this is what Jesus said. Somebody read it. It's there on the screen. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find passion. Okay. Now notice this. Here is likeness. I want you to watch very carefully when the letter, red letter is gone. What happens? Death comes. Death. Can you see that? When the red Death. letter, that's why now we needed Jesus back into our life. We need the door back into our life to bring back the likeness of God that we had from the beginning. Hello. Yes, got it, Pastor. You got it. Okay. So here, once the door is gone, the death comes. See? Once the door is gone, death comes. So this is why I call this gen um, um the gospel in Genesis. We think that the New Testament gives us, no, it's already there. God has put it in his word right from the beginning. Because the Bible said in Isaiah 46, 10, that I make known the end from the beginning. So the end is there. We are in the end here. But God has spoken about it in the beginning. Okay, so again, you can see that that is, uh, somebody is, okay, is entering now. So any question, any more question? We've got now 30 minutes. So this is just an introduction. What we are going to do is try and um, understand the letters first before we move on. That's the only way that we are going to uh, be able to progress it. So like I said from the beginning, we have to help each other, right? Some of you have got it. Some of you will need another goal to be able to understand it, to be able to grasp the meaning of these things, right? 
Okay, <clears throat> so, and we, we saw from the, the lessons is all these letters. Um, so if I put together the Aleph and the Tau, okay? Now I'm going to try and share with you what I said before about um, the, the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Eh? So, okay, just give me a minute. Let me just bring back this. Okay, just give me a minute. Um, because what I said before is these letters that are used, but not transliterated. Eh? So here we find in, I'm going to give you the original text of Genesis 1, 1. Genesis 1, 1. Eh? Um, Okay, all right. Well, just give me a minute. I've just lost that. All right, now, um, hang on, let me just go back here and in, uh, into my um, whiteboard, eh? Okay, I haven't used whiteboard for some time, but I'm going to use it now. Okay, so <clears throat> is uh, the Aleph and the Tabe. Eh? So, <clears throat> This is the Aleph, this is the first letter. First letter is Aleph and the top. So this is the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And see if I can increase the size. Uh, uh -huh. See, I'm using my laptop to write Hebrew letters. Those are things that we will um, actually have to do later on. Eh? Um, okay, let me just use my pen anyway. Um, okay, so this Aleph. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, okay, that's Aleph. And that is Tape. Eh? Okay, so the, <clears throat> the Hebrew is written from right to left, as you see. I'm writing from right to left. So here is Aleph, and this is the head of an ox. All right. Excuse my drawing. I'm trying to draw from my, okay. So head of an ox, and this is the cross. Okay. So, This is what the Greek said, the Alpha and the Omega. When John said, uh, in the beginning was the word, he is talking about this guy here, this word. It's the Aleph and the top. But when it's transliterated, it is et. Okay, et. So it's et. So here you see the word is transliterated at, right? So that is sitting right in Genesis. And uh, it means the Alpha and Omega in Greek. And we all know 
that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. But he, in the letters, he was already in Genesis. Right? If you read verse 1 and 2 of Genesis chapter 1, you'll see that the Holy Spirit was there as well. Right? Remember when it says the, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters? Yeah. Because that's in chapter 2, uh, chapter 1, verse 2 of Genesis. Right? <clears throat> okay. So far, any question? Any question? I'm trying to see how I can enlarge my my um my letters I don't seem to find where else and you can uh, I'm trying to use here so you can select the word and then you can uh, press control plus uh plus okay plus eh? yeah so control okay. plus plus control plus yeah Okay, let me put the word first. There, yeah. then plus it. Eh? No, or oh, 150. Yeah, you need to select it. You need to select the word. Okay, I have to select it. Yeah. Right, then, now, yeah. Plus. Control plus. No, nothing is happening, no. So then uh, press the control uh, and the... Uh, in inverter, the third inverter. Okay, so I put the letter first. Yeah. Then okay. select. Select. Yeah. All right. And, and go. Control. Yeah. Control, control the th uh, third inverter. Th uh, Thirteen. Uh. Th third inverter, inverter, inverter. Or oh, third inverted. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, where do I find that? Okay, okay, oh, all right, hang on. I've got, um, maybe it's not work on the whiteboard. Uh, yeah, maybe it's not on the whiteboard. Eh? Okay, I'll just stick to my writing. Uh, there were terrible it is, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but what, we, what we're saying here is the, the letters, um, are there so and Aleph and the Tau that is the the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Eh? Oops, yeah, let me just take them out, they look ridiculous. All right, okay, any question? Anybody want to ask question right now? Okay, any question? No question? Uh, what will be our homework? Huh? What will be our homework? Hey, who is that? It's Dr. Kamala. She is asking that uh, uh, what will be the next uh, homework for us for the next class? Okay, so what you need to do is um, if you haven't got the notes, you ask uh, we are going to look at uh, one, two, three, four, five letters. Next week, we are going to study. Um, no, okay, so we got uh, two months. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six letters. The first six letters we are going to study, we are going to dedicate next week just for the six letters. What we'll do, we are going to look at the meanings and the numbers, and then we'll try and find scriptures where they are effectively used, eh? where they are used. So the first six letter, that's the Aleph, the Bet, the Gimel, the Dalit, the He, the Wav, and yeah, and the Bav. So there's six there. So our homework for next week is to study those four, uh, those uh, six, come with them, know the meanings and all that. What we'll do, we are going to go and study them one by one and see the scriptural application of this word of these letters and then we'll try 
and put together. We'll ask, we'll select somebody for them to give them the name. And then we'll put the Hebrew letters there. And then we'll find the meaning of their names. How about that? That's in the last 30 minutes of next week. That's what we're going to do. Just make sure you remind me, uh, Alison. In the last 30 minutes, okay. we're going to come with your name and your name we're going to put. Don't give us the Bangladeshi spelling, but just the, <laughs> the English spelling, please. Yeah, right? So that we'll put the Hebrew letters there and maybe we can, uh, we can, um, you know, get to know the meaning of your name in Hebrew, right? Okay, we got another thirty minutes left, so it's time to just um, ask me what is there that you want to do, um, or you want to learn more in Hebrew. Now that you know a little bit of the letters and the consonant nature of that. Um, what is really there now in your heart that you want to learn first? <clears throat> uh, Reverend, we are very beginner in here. So uh -huh. we are like a very child that uh, uh, so it will be fine that if we also uh, learn the accent because okay. it's very, very new because when we teach our children what we do, first we say then our children speak behind us. Okay. To, understand the accent so it right. will be fine if you read all the word and we will speak after you that uh two or thrice that it will be very easy for us and also another team uh from reverend anando baro he has said that uh it will be fine that if we uh fixing the class within uh one thirty minutes one one hour and 30 minutes it will be fine and uh to fixing all the things all right, okay. So we got all of bed, gimel, dalit, he, um, and vav. So the sixth letter we're going to do next week, we're going to also learn the pronunciation. Now remember, alaf is not a letter, but it's a glottal stop. So this is how you 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 speak alaf. Alaf. Can you hear that? Alaf. Can you see my mouth is opening without a sound? Elif, 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 Yeah, Elif, yeah. Yeah, because it's a silent letter. It is guttural. Elif, Elif, yeah. Elif, yeah. And bet is bet, bet. I know that you've got, uh, by, by, some people read it, Pay it, because that's how we speak English with A is, uh, R is A, but for them, the R is R. So buy it, buy it, right? We'll learn that when we go into vowels, but for now, stick with the, the consonant. And bet, and then see, bet is one of the, I'll highlight that. Bet is one of the, what you call the baguette capet. I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. In, um, next week. Uh, Gimel is also Beget Kepet. Dalet is also Gevet Kepet. Like when we know the He is a guttural. So for the next 20 minutes before we finish, I'm going to just go through the, the word. Eh? So <clears throat> uh, there's a section in the notes there. Uh, it's called Baget Kepet. Uh, uh, Alison, let me see that. Final letters. Um, Baget Kepet is what page? Consonant. Okay, so here in the bounds. There are five of these letters that change their sound when they are in the word but they have a special sound when they start the letter. So there's a difference from um, when they start the letter, uh, sorry, the word, there's a different sounding from when they are in the word, okay? So they are called baguette kefet. I'm going to explain that next week. So what we'll do is sounding. Is that what you're asking, uh, um, Alison? So, Sounding, 
and meanings. Yeah? So that's what we're going to check. And they are all grouped in how we shape our mouth, the shape of our tongue in our mouth. Like the word lamed that we say, ch check today, the teacher, okay? So it is pronounced, it's called the libel. That, uh, sorry, yeah, the libel, because <laughs> your, your tongue goes right up to the roof of your mouth. See, that's how they they classify, they categorize the letter. So it's not lamed, lamed, no. It's lamed, 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 right? Lamed. Lamed, because lamed. your tongue is always touching the roof. Like guttural letters, like rosh and hay that we'll yeah. say. Next week, they call guttural letters, which means if you hear them speak, you think that they're trying to struggle with something in their, in their throat, right? Because it's a guttural letter. So, those are the sounding, because sound is important in spirituality. How many of you know that before they developed the atomic bomb, right? They got to take down the walls of Jericho. How did it go down? By sound. It's only the sound. And that's why the, the sound is very important in the spiritual realm. You know, the only currency, the only currency that has a value in the spiritual realm are your words. Your dollars and cents are no good in the spiritual realm. Do you know that? Because you can't bribe the spirits. Right? But they act according to the word. If it's negative, the enemy takes it. If it's positive, God uses it. So sound becomes so important in your dealings in the spiritual realm. So what happens is the, the Jews before in ancient time, they just all gathered and the priest will stand up. Say they will speak the Shema, right? The Shema is here, O Israel. Here, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And he will stand up and everybody will listen to the sound of this, to the sound. And the preacher will stand up and say, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Yechot. See, that's the sound. And the, the people take that sound with it. Okay, so the sound is important in understanding. You know, I struggle when it starts. Uh, and uh, sometimes I laugh because I I sort of um, struggle to go through. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying today is the sound is important. So yes, we are going to do that sound again for those six letters. So next week, that's what we're going to do. Take the six letters. Okay, we still got another 20 minutes. Um, So Aleph, Aleph is the first letter. It is number one. So Aleph is the first letter and it is number one. So for them, they dedicate that to the strength, to the power. When they see that for them, Aleph is like God because Elohim starts with Aleph. The word Elohim starts with Al, right? And then you got Bet, it's the house, it's the family, right? So you see in our lives, whether we like it or not, whether you are a Christian or an atheist, from the order of what God has created, nothing comes before God. God has to be first. Guess what's the next one? It's the letter bet. If you read your notes, it'll tell you it's about the family. My friends, 
Bangladeshis that are listening to me, there's nothing that comes second to God, and that's your family. If you're thinking that your ministry is next to God, forget it. Your ministry, well, that's for me. My ministry comes third. But my family comes before, uh, after God. As soon as God is there the first, my family is always second. Every other thing becomes, they can choose their place between three or after three. Because why? The very first letter of the Bible in Hebrew come from the letter Bet. So what does the Bible say? That your mouth will speak the abundance of their heart. So if the first word that comes out of God's word that has the first letter in that first word as the family, so it must be the content of God's heart that what's important to him is your family and my family. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yeah. So, and that's how you know how God and how you work is in the word. Nothing else is going to suggest to you. It has to be through the word of God. Hallelujah. So, um, just before we finish, um, Alison, you want to choose someone to, because you'd know everyone, if you, to, you know, just close in the word of prayer for us. Uh, for us, Reverend uh, Bernard Hembaroy, he can pray for us. All right. Okay. Thank you. আচ্ছা আসুন আমরা প্রার্থনায় যাই পবিত্র মহান প্রভু আমরা তোমার পবিত্র নামের ধন্যবাদ দেই যে এই দিন পর্যন্ত খ্রিস্ট যিশুতে তুমি আমাদেরকে বাঁচিয়ে রেখেছো আমরা ধন্যবাদ দেই আজকের দিনে তুমি তোমার পবিত্র আত্মায় আমাদেরকে অভিষিক্ত করেছো আর সেই অভিষিক্তের আশীর্বাদ স্বরূপ আজকে আমরা হিব্র ভাষা শেখার একটা সুযোগ আমরা পেয়েছি এবং একজন সন্তানকে তুমি মনোনীত করেছো যার মধ্য দিয়ে আমরা এই শিক্ষা পেয়েছি এবং যিনি আয়োজন করেছেন সেই প্রিন্স ভাইকে তোমার কাছে রাখি তুমিও তাকে আশীর্বাদ করো আমাদের কাছে এই ভাষা নূতন এবং হয়তো অনেক সময় কঠিন হবে কিন্তু প্রভু আমরা তো তোমার এই সন্তান তুমি আমাদের মধ্যে জীবিত আছো বিদায় তোমার পবিত্র আত্মার জ্ঞান দ্বারা আমাদের কান খুলে দাও আমাদের চিন্তা খুলে দাও এবং আমাদের এই শিক্ষা গ্রহণ করার জন্য আমাদেরকে হৃদয় ভিতরে কথা বলো পবিত্র আত্মার মধ্য দিয়ে যেন আমরা এই ভাষা বুঝতে পারি আজকে আমরা যারা এসছি আমাদের জীবনের জন্য একটি সুবর্ণ সুযোগ এই সুযোগ আমরা যেন সৎ ব্যবহার করি এবং এই সময় তুমি আমাদের দিয়েছ আমাদের পৃথিবীতে কোন সময় নাই তোমার সময় আর তোমার সময়ের মধ্যে দিয়ে আমরা যেন এই শিক্ষা লাভ করতে পারি তুমি সেইভাবে আমাদেরকে আশীর্বাদ করো এখানে যারা উপস্থিত প্রত্যেকটি পরিবারকে প্রত্যেকটি সন্তানকে তোমার সুসমাচারের শক্তি সুসমাচারের আনন্দ সুসমাচারের আলো এবং সুসমাচারের খাদ্য দিয়ে প্রত্যেককে পরিতৃপ্ত করো যেন আমরা শক্তিশালী রাজ্য তোমার যে রাজ্যের আকাঙ্ক্ষা তা পূর্ণ করতে পারি এমন আশীর্বাদ করো এই ছোট প্রার্থনা আমাদের ত্রাণ কর্তা মুক্তিদাতা প্রভু যিশু খ্রিস্টের নামে চাই আমেন আমেন Pastor, uh, unmute your phone. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So next week, we um, I want to thank everybody. We've um, um, come together. We're starting. So next week, we got those letters, six letters. 
we are going to um, share them with each and every one of us. Eh? Okay, anybody want to say something before we we um, finish? Is it? Yeah, I have a question. Is it? Yeah. Is it only two month course? Okay, that's what we spoke of. Um, because this is just a short term. If you read your note, um, yeah. it, it's just about identifying the letters and the vowels. So we'll see if uh, we have to continue after December, because I know Christmas is coming up. We might yeah, have yeah. To, to complete it in January. Yeah. If you, and, yeah. yeah. And every Saturday uh, class? Every Saturday, yeah. Same time, eh? yeah. Same time. Because everybody is working, you know, and uh, we cannot. Uh, so, I mean, for me, it's okay. I can, because uh, at the moment, I'm just working from home. And, okay. uh, thank, thank you, Reverend Eliza. It's, uh, it's afternoon or two o'clock. Uh, if I not make mistake, it's two o'clock in your place. Uh, what is the time now? Hang on. Yeah, um, it is. It's 9.45 a.m. in our place, maybe 2 o'clock in your place. So thank you very much. It was a privilege for us that uh, Reverend Allies is very busy with uh, uh, teach many nations in all over the world. So he's engaged to uh, prepare the people. So it's an opportunity for us to uh, get him uh, for two hours long. So also yeah. thanks to everyone, Reverend uh, Barnard uh, Hembaroy, uh, Shushandeep, uh, Pranayda, uh, Uttamda, Dr. Kamalesh, uh, Brother Joel, and uh, Brother Rajoy. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your uh, time, because we also know that you are very busy with each one of your profession. So we are very thankful for your presence and hope that uh, next week a few one more will join with us, uh, because uh, uh, due to the network problem and many uh, different work uh, schedule, they cannot catch us today. But we hope that on next class, they will uh, get us. And for that reason, we had recorded the classes. Yeah. And uh, I will share you the uh, re video recording that yeah. you can uh, watch it again for more understanding. Because English is, uh, is not our first language. Uh, so sometimes it's very difficult to understand. Uh, um, I want to talk in Bangla. Uh, yes, uh, go ahead. Elijah, because yeah, go uh, ahead. Ek to bishay jodi hoye ta amader jonno ashole oneker jonno mone hotche ek to kotin hoye jete pare. Ah, shei khetre ke amader eti ki onu bad korar door karar chhe. Karon jodi onu bad korte jay ta hole ashole aro beshi shumai lagbe. Ei chinta kore ashole amra kintu onu bad er dekhe jai na. Dakhen class kintu pray der ghonta hoye gatche. Jodi onu bad kortam then it will be three hours. So I am talking them because. Uh, if we need the translate uh, or interpret in Bangla, then it will be class because we already we had completed a yeah. uh, one and a half hour. Yeah. So if we need to interpret it, then it will be three hours. So yeah. uh, what we can uh, uh, solve this issue? Yeah. yeah, well, you can do that by taking the recording yeah. and uh, you know, and just uh, do it from there. Maybe then you can take it with those that cannot uh, have English. Yeah. Yes, I also say said them the same thing. Ah, uh, jeta amader puro program tra recording hobe. Amra ah jodi kono karone mane hoy toba amader onik shomai network er problem hoy. Ba onik shomai amader bastho tar karone ba bivino shamoshar karone jodi kono karone amra miss kore feli. Ah, uh, ta hole ita amra chista korbo jono video ta dekhe jono amra paroborti class ta abar catch korte pari. Ebang kono karone jodi ah class chala kali na amader kono bishay dhorte jodi shamoshar hoy. তাহলে সেইটা আপনি আবার এটা দেখতে পারবেন এবং আমাদের একটা WhatsApp group আছে সেই WhatsApp group এ প্রশ্নগুলো আপনারা শেয়ার করবেন যদি কোনো বুঝতে সমস্যা হয় আমরা তখন সেটা নিয়ে আলোচনা করব আপনার কি এই শীতগুলো আছে হ্যাঁ পাস্তা আছে আমি ওটা আপনাকে দেব আমি আপনাকে দেব আচ্ছা আর দরকার নাই ট্রান্সলেট শীত হইলে হবে এবং আমি চেষ্টা করতেছি আমি দুর্বল মনে হয় এখানে I want to give thanks, Brother Joel and Ajoy, because they are from the hill tracks. Okay. So, very remote areas, sometimes they suffer for the internet problem or the electricity problem, but they are joining with us. So, very thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Dr. Kamalesh, he is a ENT surgeon. Uh, he is on the hospital now, but he is also lis li listening us. So he is on, maybe he is with the patient. So he is also uh, listening us. And we are very thankful to Uttam Dada. He is also far away. Uh, special thanks to Shushandi and Pranayada because we are very busy and they are very responsible with their uh, organization. So they are giving their time also. Reverend uh, uh, Barnard, thank you very much because you, uh, we also know that you are very busy for the uh, Shevak Shava. You are preparing uh, for that. So, but you are giving your time. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, okay. Uh, well, we'll see you to next week then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Send Thank you, you the, the link for the recording. Thank yeah. you and bye. Right. Thank you.